W F M U W F M U W F M U W F M U W F M U W F M U
it, the tide is high Above the heat, don't cry, just dry your eyes Give them bamboo sticks in the Georgia sky Black you rub it, all blueberry pie On the gray mantis, grasshopper blue Everything opens, everything new Nightmares, first degree, murder day shop You'll see what you know, what you don't know is no clue
This is the best show on WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling, here with you until 11 tonight. We are here each and every Tuesday night from 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. Whether you like it or not, we're here and... Ah, we just heard from the Beta Band. Their record, Hot Shots 2, the name of the uh, album. We heard their cover of the Harry Nilsson song, One. And uh, I actually saw the Beta Band the other day, and uh, not so hot. Why did they, they... Why didn't they play that? Even though this was that, this song in retrospect was not that good that I just played. I should have played the original or the version by Three Dog Night or the version by Amy Mann or the version by Tom Tricoli's Dog. I should have played any of those versions before I played this beta band version and it was not a uh, it's not a cover of the song it's a reimagining of the song kind of like the way planet of the apes is a reimagining of the original before that mix master mike from his new album spin psyche it's actually spin cycle but done like a uh, you know like psych p s y c l e cycle so it's a play on words, actually. And the song we heard was Board Burner. And this is available on the fantastic Moonshine record label. Oh, before that, the folk implosion. Mr. Lou Barlow teaming up with Mr. John Davis. The name of the record, take a look inside the folk implosion. We heard Start Again. Start Again. Before that, the last band from their fantastic demo slash album, album demo. We heard Coke Stroke by the last band and there is a last band uh, I think there's a, a Yahoo chat uh, set up for the for the last band so if you ever need more information I'm sure you can search the name of the band the last band over at yahoo.com the cuts gave us salt in my wounds from their own self-released CDR, and they will be in the area this weekend, where I am unsure. I believe they're playing Saturday, sometime, somewhere. For more information, for more information, why don't you email them at the same place you would contact them to see about getting a copy of this record, which is J2B79. J2B79 at hotmail.com. Before the cuts, we heard from the Grammy Award winning act Radiohead from their Grammy Award winning album OK Computer on the Capitol Record label. Let Down from Radiohead, who played last week, and I actually saw the show, and I enjoyed myself at the show. Didn't like the beta band, liked the Kid Koala, and liked Radiohead. I also liked the part when the uh, light rail, which is the, the train that takes you around the Jersey City area, I liked the part when that broke down. I thought that was a nice touch. 
walking 11 blocks back to my car, abandoning the light rail as they wait to bring a train down the opposite track to go backwards to where we needed to go. Nice touch, New Jersey Transit. You capped off a, a, a fun evening. Oh, starting us off, Echo and the Bunnyman going out by request. I send that out to Brian. The Killing Moon. Now, you know I might have played a lot of stuff that is considered quote-unquote commercial in that last set. Or crowd-pleasing, or... But you know what? I'll get past that. Don't worry. Oh, we'll get to the stuff no one likes. So we played the stuff that dumb people like. Now we'll play the stuff that only five smart people like through the rest of the show. Nothing for the dumb people for the rest of the show. Hey, the phone number here, 201-200-9368. That is the phone number to reach me, 201-200-9368. The email address, just as easy, Tom S. T O M S at WFMU.org. And tonight it is, I'm making it official, Open Phone Tuesday. So anything that you, the listener, wish to talk about, the number to call, 201 200 9368. And the email address, thomas at wfmu.org. The thing to do is uh, email me if you uh, if you wish to join Sharpling's Army, which is our new uh, our new exciting fan club. Just email thomas at wfmu.org, and you will be a part of the action. WFMU, you're on the air. FMU, you're on the air. Let me try this again. Eh, uh, uh. Hello? Hello? Huh. Okay. I'm going to try it one more time. Ah. Okay. It's a work in progress. Don't worry. Fantastic. We are working here, taking the program to new heights so that you, the listener, will be more satisfied than ever. WFMU, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. How are you? All right. How are you? I'm okay. Today is open what Tuesday? Open phones. Oh, cool. So you can talk about whatever you want, right? Yes. Well, what do you I want to talk about? Acupuncture. Okay. <laughs> I had my first treatment um, last week Wednesday. Really? And why? Yeah. Do, you, do you have a bad back or do you have a lot of pain? No, I'm actually studying it. I've been studying it for oh. a year. Oh, okay. You had your first Yeah. Your first class learning how to, to perform acupuncture. No, I had the first treatment ever. You, oh, your first treatment. Now I'm confused now. Okay. What, what did you have done? I had, well, I wanted to like stop smoking mm -hmm. and I wanted to experience like, you know, having acupuncture because I've been studying it for a year and I, you know, I have not, didn't go ever. No. So you were studying it? I am studying it still. You are still studying it? Yeah, but I've been studying it for a year. It's a but, three and a half year program. But you had never been on the receiving end of exactly. acupuncture. Exactly. So you and decided yes. <laughs> to receive acupuncture. Yes. And how was it? Amazing. It's like amazing. Now what, what is it like? Does it, does it hurt? Well, I was scared at first, you know, but um, once you get used to it, it's just like a little pinch. And then, like, once you have the needles in, you sort of sit there, well, lay there for a while. And the needles come out, and it's like I feel like a totally different person. I'm really? More relaxed and more calm. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, where, what did I get stuck on? You know what I mean? It's uh -huh. just like, oh, my God, I'm so comfortable. Like, a mouse ran by me the other day. I mean, normally I would have been screaming. I uh -huh. didn't care. <laughs> now what what does it uh, what does it do? Does it, it release uh, endorphins or something? Or what? Te teach me. Well, I've been studying it for a year and I'm like learning the basics. I haven't actually needled anyone yet, but I will in the future. But um, it's like all about like chi, you okay. know, and um, 
it can be used for like diseases, mm-hmm. not just like pain. You know, like okay. Um, I'll, I'm also in the herb program, so I'll be using herbs and acupuncture and needling. But you've you you've used herbs in the past, right? Um, There's one herb I'm sure you've used. Once. That's also an, an, another one, amazing One time? Thing. <laughs> I don't believe you. Well, not one time. A few times. I don't now because um, God's I'm green herb. I'm very sensitive. It's like I think most people like use it to party, but to me it's like a very spiritual drug. And, like lots of shamans and people who are into things like that use drugs to get to other planes. Uh-huh. And um, like I had my first out-of-body experience off a pot, and I'm like, wow, okay. I've touched something, like, really different. You know what I mean? So I don't... Well, I don't so you, you respect it, then. You're huh? just not looking to just get high in, in somebody's exactly. car. Exactly. For, for, you know, for a it's quick, a uh, right. you know. But everyone should get acupuncture. So <laughs> when will you be a... Do you have to get a license? Yeah. You have to go to school. You have to get licensed. It's really, really difficult, and it's really, really expensive. And N- I've now, never experienced anything so difficult in my life. Now, how far away are you from actually... <laughs> trying acupuncture on somebody. Um, I entered the clinic this trimester. And okay. I'll be observing, and then at some point I'll become an intern. Then I'll actually start like you know needling patients. But we'll, we first start practicing on ourselves and uh-huh. each other in class. Okay. So. So how how long how far away is that now before um, you actually needle people? Thinking about two more trimesters, maybe uh, in about half a year or so. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, give us a call when you're doing it. Okay. All right? I will. Maybe Bye. we'll do live acupuncture on the radio. Um, <laughs> this will be funny. Well, if you're ready, <laughs> you let me know. All right. All right. Thanks. Hey, thanks for calling. Bye. Bye. The definition of open phone Tuesday proven by our completely out of left field acupuncture discussion. The phone number 201 200 Nine three six eight. Let's see. Bill emailing Thomas at WFMU.org saying, Hey, while you're on the topic of trains, why not mention the trolleys in Newark, which I'm told in about two weeks will be no longer. These trains have been described to me as pre-war or soon after post-war. One day on the light rail, a New Jersey transit guy told me he'd take one of those trolleys over the light rail any day in terms of durability. How about playing some crazy punk rock song about trains, Abu trains, old and new? I don't. You lost me on that last sentence there, Bill. But let me tell you all, everyone listening, Sharpling's Army is an exciting new... uh, thing that's coming we will be uh it is a it is it is a fan club but it is more than a fan club it's a it's a way to unite everybody like an army and if you want to get on board there's going to be membership cards and then we're going to go to movies together we're going to get group rates to amusement parks maybe and do all kinds of things. We'll have like a giant snowball fight together and maybe do paintball or something. Oh, it's going to be exciting. But the only way to get in on it is Thomas at WFMU.org. You email me and say, I'd like to enlist. Somebody just emailing me right now about the acupuncture call saying, Tom, who is the girl that is calling you right now? You know who it is? It is one of the many participants of Open Phone Tuesday, 201-200-9368 is the phone number to get in on the action. Oh, what else did I have to talk about? Oh, there was some exciting stuff uh, that went down. uh, Huh. Okay. No, I'm not going to talk about. All right. I'm thinking. Hey, did anybody see the uh, the Twisted Sister behind the music the other night? That was completely awesome. Twisted Sister behind the music, which we will talk about after this phone call on Open Phone Tuesday, WFMU. You're on the air. Hi, you said someone called asking who I was? Yes. Uh, you, Tana? What's that? I, 
Uchenna. I go to um, Pacific College of Oriental Medicine. All right, great. What's your name, though? Uchenna. Uchenna? Yeah, do I know this person? <laughs> how, do you, how do you spell your name, Uchenna? Um, it's U-C-H-E-N-N-A. And what 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 uh, what's the origin of that name, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it's Nigerian. Really? Well, it's yeah, a very, I'm Nigerian. It's a very nice name. Okay, can I give my email address? Maybe this person wants to contact me. Absolutely. Okay, it's of water, o f w a t e r, at hotmail dot com. Okay. Thank you. So if that person wants to get in touch with you, although you know what, now you're going to have all kinds of creeps emailing you. It's okay. I can deal with creeps. <laughs> All right, well, get ready. Okay. Creeps, I'm going to say right now, creeps, <laughs> do not email this woman. There you do go. Do not harass her. That's right. Leave her alone. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. All right. All right. Thanks. Good night. Bye. The email's coming in fast and furious. Robin saying she wants to join Sharpling's army. A wise move. It doesn't cost anything. She wants to join Sharpling's army, and she wants to know, do we get to wear cool uniforms? There might be uniforms. We're going to see if we're going to look into all kinds of stuff on this. Everyone, oh, you're all going to be so happy. You join this uh, Sharpling's army, you're all going to be so, it's going to melt your mind when we march strong down, down Montgomery. And take the mayor's office. Wait, I wasn't supposed to talk about that yet. The fact that we will be seizing the mayor's office and taking ownership of Jersey City. So strike that last detail. You didn't hear that. We will not be marching on the Jersey City mayor's office and seizing control of the local government. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Um, did you mention the Newark uh, City Subway earlier? Somebody emailed and told me to mention. I mentioned the light rail. Yes. Well, they're replacing the old uh, subway cars with new light rail vehicles. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Mm, we'll see how it works out. The, the new vehicles are Japanese, and they look a lot nicer than the old ones, and they have air conditioning. The old ones don't. Uh huh. So that's good. That's but, a... you know, they're only putting them in now at the end of the summer. So... So it's not like that air conditioning is going to be such a big uh, boon to uh, not till next your, summer. Your comfort. I use I actually use the, the the Newark City subway every day, but there's only one line, so it's not much compared to the New York one. Mm -hmm. You do you work in Newark or do you live in Newark? I live in Newark actually. Where what part of Newark, if you don't mind me asking? Forest Hill. It's uh, in North Newark. And how is that? It's actually kind of nice. There, you know, it's for Newark. It's really nice. Ah, uh -huh. because. Uh, I've had to go through Newark with my father, and and uh, who grew up in Newark, which I guess many people around here yes. have been, you know, have gone through that, and and you go through, and and they reminisce about how that lot used to be, like an ice cream shop or something. Mm -hmm. But it's just like the area where he grew up in is just is gone pretty much. It was like it was all raised, and yeah. so, but I didn't know if that was. Uh, but is how is the how do you feel about the the comeback of Newark? Is that is that something you see? Not really, not most of it. Mm -hmm. Just the downtown area, right around NJ Pack. Uh huh. And, and they, if they build some stadiums, you yeah. know. But mostly no. How far away are you from that? Oh, I'm pretty far from that. I mean, I'm all the way over on the other side of the uh, of the subway. Okay. From that, although since I'm right near the the last stop on the subway, it doesn't take too long, fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. to get down there. So that's not bad, but. Uh, I wonder how long it will take for that actual, like the the rebirth of Newark to take. I think there will be a rebirth right around Penn Station, and as for the rest of Newark, it's just going to remain cruddy. Because it can stay, because it, it can stay cruddy the way Atlantic City is yes. cruddy. The way <laughs> it's like people get what they want, you know, like you know, like they have their 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 basketball and hockey uh, arena. And they have their concert hall, and you know, but then they, you know, there's just these bombed out areas that there's just they just give up on. Yes. You know, as long as it it brings in what they want, which is revenue, it's not you know, as long as they can turn Newark into a place that generates 
big time revenue, they don't have to worry about where people actually live. Yeah, they don't really care so much about that. No, in terms of uh Although I did notice that they did raise some old nasty um uh projects and replace them with nice new housing, although I don't know how much more expensive that is, but uh I think it's probably you know, it's just new projects, but they certainly look a lot nicer right around right around the I think third to last stop on the uh on the subway, so well, that's, yeah. But mostly it's still you gotta, pretty much a wasteland. I guess you gotta take it where you can get it when it's kinda you know on the on the downturn. You know, you take whatever change you can get for short term at least and, and you hope that legitimate change happens. I predict that uh that Newark will come back to its full strength um in five hundred years. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, maybe Maybe in 150, but 500 is probably more realistic. And and it will it will rise up, and then like Hoboken will be like the bombed out city. Like it, it's because not everywhere can be great. No. And not, I mean it's just it it just seems like it it ends up that way, that you know it's always there's always going to be the places where you know the powers that be decide that this is the the place that they will just not pay attention to and not put money into and let people suffer in that place. And it, you know, is does it go cyclical like that? Is it like a, uh, is it? Yes. So, so because Hoboken used to used to suck. When when was that? I, I somebody told me that. Well, actually, it sucks right now, <laughs> for a different reason. Because, for a different reason, because of all the all the Irish all the Irish bars and. It's not even the I I just can, it's like a frat it's like frat island. They should actually change the name of Hoboken to Frat Island, where it's like the. Uh, it's like the 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 uh, square mile uh, the mile square party uh, barge, that just like, I mean, it's just meant for people to just get drunk at night. Yes. So I mean, Hoboken used to be laughed at, you know, way back when. You know, I don't know how long ago was it was. Thirty years ago. Somebody was telling me that uh, it was like that until a bunch of mysterious fires, that uh, were strongly suspected to be just. You know, landlords torching their own torching places. their own buildings. Yeah, and then they and then they rebuilt everything up, uh, all gentrified. Huh. But I, I don't know when that would have been. Maybe the early '80s. I think the early '80s is when it legitimately when the uh, the boom hit Hoboken. You know, but it. Uh, yeah, but it, if 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 Newark was in the '50s and '60s was the place to be, and Hoboken wasn't. Then it could, it could, you know, things could turn and like, you know, where, where's the next, where's the place that is the place to be right now that's like on the way out? Hmm. You know, I don't know. But you know what? Then again, I'm not a, a, uh, a city planner, so I'm not good at this. Well, Hoboken and Jersey City are, 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 are they still on the way up? Uh, they're getting more and more expensive still? I think so, yes. Well, I, maybe, uh, I think, you know. I think Hoboken might have, uh, might have, uh, peaked. Might, yeah, they might have peaked, and and uh, now it is in the the slow and sleazy decline with all of the uh, frat boys. Yeah, and uh, but you know I think Jersey City's still going upwards. And mm. I, well, as long as it's still hip to be near New York City, then I think Newark, at least right around Penn Station, will benefit. But the other areas will remain bombed out. Yeah, you know what else it's hip to be? What's that? Square. Ah. Do you know who said that? I I kind of prefer circular. Well, do you know who said it was hip to be square? Mm. Oh, come on. You don't know? Well, didn't Huey Lewis yes! say Yes! He wasn't the first one, though, was he? He's the patron saint of this show. Huey Lewis. I, I think you're just saying that to rile up all the regular WFMU listeners. Come on, Huey. Who doesn't love Huey Lewis? And what about the Beta Band? It, it didn't sound too much like the Beta Band at the end of that last set. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't wild about uh, the it, Beta. Well, I, I saw them open for Radiohead, and the stuff that I had heard on records, it didn't sound anything like that when they played a lot. They sounded like like a hippie groove band when they played uh, when they opened uh, for uh, the uh, the Radiohead uh, concert. Well, so you're saying that that rap thing was the beta band? That was the beta band. No, no, I, I don't believe you. Well, I'm telling you the truth. I think you're making that up. I'm not making it up. Well, actually, think... though, the the occasional, um, how shall I put it, uh, st 
stretching of, uh, of of reality is one of the uh, high points of your show, according to many people. So what? How dare you? Hey, 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 hey! I'm I'm just... get off my phone. Finally, I get to do that to somebody. I've been waiting for that moment my whole life to be Bob Grant, and now to to commemorate my my becoming Bob Grant, I will eat at the Rio Diner tonight and eat the Bob Grant seafood special, which Bob has on the menu. Eliza emailing in, or Elisa, Elisa D, emailing in saying, acupuncture practitioners are only one step away from masseuses, and we all know what that means. I don't know what that means. And you know what I say? If it is what I think it means, I salute you for entering the world of acupuncture. Here we go. April emailing and saying, sign me up in Sharpling's Army. May I suggest a game of all-terrain capture the flag as the first Army outing? You know, I will consider it because you know what? Because this Army is an Army of the people. It is ruled by only one. It is like, it's not, actually, it is not an army. I would be the general, I guess, or the major. I'm, I'm not sure what the, I have to look into army lingo before I, uh, truly, before the army is truly launched, which will be in a matter of, of weeks. We will be launching Sharpling's army. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Somebody wants to know, I, I mentioned Twisted Sister, they want me to, uh, Adam wants me to uh, to go on about uh, Sharpling's army. I mean, about uh, the Twisted Sister. He also joined Sharpling's army. He wants to know. But the Twisted Sister uh, behind the music was completely awesome because it was just, it was showing, like, D. Snyder completely. I mean, here's a guy who is just literally a, a 15th rate Alice Cooper, who, uh, I mean, Alice Cooper, as, as great as Alice Cooper has been, is still, I mean, this is not, we're, we're not talking about one of the top five of all time with Alice Cooper. As people may feel differently, but, but uh, you know, Twisted Sister, just, just completely ho horrifying. And then he gets so captivated with his own uh, moronic, with his own moronic persona. And, you know, with the, in the video, it's like, uh, we're not going to take it and I want to rock playing this cartoon character with the guy from uh, Animal House in it. And then all of a sudden he wants to know why he wasn't being taken seriously. Like, kids didn't think he was, like, cool anymore. Like, well, maybe it's because you're just, you're, you're no different than, than Roadrunner now. Hey, WFMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. Great show. Hey, thanks. Who's this? Well, I'm in the hospital. Really? Yeah, I got involved in a uh, shark attack. You did not. I did. I, I saw a shark, you know. It was about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. I I moved towards it, and I bit its fin. Oh. Wah, wah. Hey, where's your... Where's your oh, uh, no, it was a baby shark. Where's your rim shot? My what? The rim shot for that for that that joke. No, it was a baby shark, you know. They, they told me it was good luck. Yeah, I, was, I would have been okay, except I decided to go postal. And so, where where did this happen? It happened it happened down in Florida, Miami Beach. Uh huh. And it got my my left leg. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it hey, got let, my right leg. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you something here. Yeah, you're I, you're doing all the shark material, right? What's wrong? What's wrong? You run out of uh, you, you run out of Viagra jokes. You're moving on to the shark well, I'm, stuff I'm here now. Here in the waiting room, and I, I was hoping that he could talk to somebody. Oh. And get me. You're so, you're so, that's it. Remember that guy's voice. WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, um, I want to mention, I want to respond to what the girl said about acupuncture. Okay. That it was a step away from um, massage therapists mm -hmm. or masseuses. Yes. But first of all, on two accounts, it's really, what she said is ridiculous. First I mean, of all. Are you, are you an acupuncturist? Uh, no, but I'm the boyfriend of the girl who's an acupuncture. Okay, I'm, look, I didn't say it. I'm just, I'm yeah. just taking all sides here. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. First of all, 
Acupuncture is a practice that's been going that's like centuries and centuries years old. And mm-hmm. it's a very complicated network of like mm-hmm. regular like neural points on the body. It's mm-hmm. re- an incredibly complicated network that's been being like developed for thousands and thousands of years. Uh-huh. That's not just jerking someone off. All right? Uh-huh. To use needles to go to particular points and everything. It's not a massage. Okay. First, first of all. All right. Look, I'm, of, I agree. Second, I agree. Second of all, what's uh-huh. really insulting is that she sa- she's saying, oh, they're a step away from masseuses, and you know what that means, as in giving sex workers a really bad name. That's mis- okay, you got to... Uh... Jerk off mis- Okay, you got to... Uh... Let's do it clean, if you know what I mean, my friend. Hello? At WFMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. Yes. Tom, my name is Dee, and I wanted to talk to you about Dee Schneider. Okay. Do you know um, him? Not personally, but I met him once at a, a Nine Inch Nails show. And what what was he doing there? Uh, passing out copies of uh, the Widowmaker <laughs> album? No, actually, he was there with his children and his uh, '80s uh, sort of rocked out hippieish type wife. Uh huh. And um, his kids, I guess they they must have been about like eight and eleven. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing. And, you know, they were kind of just, like, running around all over the place. They had half-shaved heads and, you know, wore, ripped up T-shirts. They were jumping the wall going into, like, the, the main floor area. Uh-huh. And, like, I don't know, he seemed really oblivious to this whole thing, but we were sitting there. So you think he's a bad parent? Well, I'm not really saying that, am I, though, Tom? But you think he might, you, in that case, he was irresponsible? Right. I, I would think, I mean, if I had 8- and 11-year-old children, I doubt I'd be letting them jump over a six-foot wall to join a bunch of people who were killing each other. And I, now would would yeah. you, if you had an eight-year-old, does does an eight-year-old belong at a Nine Inch Nails concert in the first place? I think not. Leave the eight-year-old at home. Maybe the eleven-year-old. May probably not even the eleven-year-old. No, not, not the eight-year-old. Not precocious old. enough at eleven. No. So, so you you were, you were just shocked by this. Uh, I was a bit shocked, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, w- I was more shocked at the fact that, um, well, you know, I I finally mustered up the nerve. Well, actually, it was on a dare to go up to him and, and, you know, I guess ask him for an autograph, which is really lame, and I never do that with famous people whenever I see them. I always leave them alone, but D. Schneider is, you it was, know. It was like campy for you. Yeah, he's like a fallen rock icon from like two years out of the 80s, so I had to do it. Uh-huh. So what did you do? I, I went up to him with my ticket stub, and I was like, hey, are you D. Schneider? And he's like, yeah, I think so. Uh-huh. So he was being you know? like, kind of like a wise guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like uh, of course I am, but uh, I think I think so. Or so I thought, because, you know, and this is the punchline now. I noticed after the show when I, you know, I was showing the autograph to my friends, he spelled his name wrong. How do you spell it? Well, I mean, it looked like maybe he, it's supposed to be D-E-E, right? Uh-huh. And it kind of looked like D-E, and then it kind of trailed off, and there was like a real sno- like sloppy kind of Schneider that he wrote. Mm-hmm. So, I well, don't, maybe he wasn't kidding. Maybe, maybe, maybe he honestly wasn't sure. <laughs> maybe right. he banged his head before Maybe he went he into the show those were her kids, kids or anything i mean i don't know so uh so that was your brush with fame with d snyder yeah brief but beautiful well that's a, that's fantastic i like that story <laughs> did you watch the behind the music the other night for twisted no, sister unfortunately i did not though that sounds like a really good one to you watch you should watch it it should, it's probably going to be on another 400 times so I'm sure it will. all right i appreciate you calling no problem. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, now I'm looking. Hey, by the way, you're listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. And, uh, uh, hold on one second, folks.
All right, folks, sorry about that. Just checking the email here, and I'm sickened by what I just have, have just been uh, exposed to. Another DJ on the station. Sharpling's Army is an original idea. Yes, correct? Yes, I'll answer that. But the notion that another disc jockey would even jump on board, try to hang his little sleazy tentacles to my my beautiful idea. Here's what Hova from he's on nine to eleven, nine to noon on uh, Monday mornings. Writes, congratulations on the success of Sharpling's Army. I was thinking of starting my own club and was hoping you could give me some advice. Do you know a place that prints ID cards reasonably inexpensively? First of all, that's incorrect grammar right there. Also, which do you think sounds better? Hova's Heroes or the H-Bomb Squad? Or maybe Hova's Witnesses, which is a, a, a religious slur, I just want to say, by the way. Thanks in advance. How dare you jump on my coattails, you low life, you. This is it, everybody. Sharpling's army. When we unite, I'm I'm doubled. I'm doing double time now. I need recruits. Post haste. Thomas at wfmu.org is the address. We've got our first uh, target in in our sights. Our first target will be Hova. On WFMU, call me, Hova, you coward. I want to face you on the radio. WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, what's up, Tom? How you doing? Yeah, hey, uh, what was that episode about uh, behind the music on VH1? I didn't see it. It was about Twisted Sister. Yeah, I know, but uh, what'd they say? Well, they did the, have you, you've seen Behind the Music before, right? Yeah, I'm familiar with the show, but I didn't see that. Well, they just told the, the story of Twisted Sister, how they pretty much imploded before anyone even really cared that much and they let their egos completely get away from them uh, okay no no details on their uh, fall from grace well there were it just the d snyder became a megalomaniac and uh and completely got carried away with himself and then started making all the wrong decisions like their uh their fantastic cover of a uh, leader of the pack uh, okay did they uh, blow all their money or did they keep oh yeah d snyder was broke in the early 90s was working a job doing bookkeeping at a uh, at like a local like warehouse on Long Island something I don't know if it was a warehouse or not but just a, a job on Long Island he had to ride a bike to the job back and forth uh, because he didn't have a car at that point oh wow Did so he, uh, have that same um, uh, what do you call those type of haircuts hockey haircuts uh, well, he kind of just had like that blown out haircut. He didn't have the mullet, like that weird, like, like uh, cyber mullet that he developed. Uh, yeah, it's like a super mullet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's got that kind of like uh, that kind of that kind of you know millennial feel to it. Oh, you know, okay, yeah. like it's it's supposed to be vaguely futuristic, but it's still a mullet. Uh, it but looks pretty ridiculous. Huh? You should check out the show, though. Uh, yeah, I'll. Uh... Hey, TV guy. did you do any of the old, uh, you know, doot, doot tonight, the old, uh, you know, hitting the old uh, hash pipe? Uh, no. Why? You sound a little uh, little blown out. That's all I'm yeah. <laughs> You sound a little low energy tonight. That's, that's like my natural state, you know. Okay, well, if, that, if that's the way you are. Mellow. Okay. Well, I all appreciate right, you calling. Thanks for calling. Take it easy. All right, bye. WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I think this guy beat me to the punch. So uh, I saw up to the part where they played that gig in England. Uh huh. And uh, what was the Scottish guy saying? They oh, were getting where they were getting booed, and then uh, something was being thrown at them. Yeah, the people were throwing stuff at them, and yeah, that was uh, that was when they were trying to get signed. They were they were playing over in England. I think they were playing f for Secret Records, which was their their big. Uh, well, but what, the, what was the thing with the the Scottish guy? Oh, with the with the makeup that part when he was wiping. No, the... no, they're saying they're throwing. Oh, that part. Yeah, we can't talk about that part. We can't talk about it. Yeah, oh, that's well. kind of 
that's a little, you know, there's a part in the show. Something got thrown at, at uh, the band, which no human should ever have that thrown at them. It's uh, something that monkeys throw at each other. Oh. Right? The monkeys? No, not the monkeys. Oh. All oh. right. Hey, thanks. Have you been a bit behind the music about the monkeys? Yes, there has. Is it as good as Twisted Sister one? I think it was a little better. I think the best behind the music one, as far as I'm concerned, might have been... You know, I'm going to have to think about that for the best one. What was your favorite one of all time? That's a tough call, damn brother. Well, just you think about it and you call me back. All right, then. All right, thanks. All right, bye. WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, um, I was just passing through, and I happened to cross your station, and uh, this Sharpling's Army sounds quite interesting. I was just wondering, uh, I'd like to get a little information about it. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about the uh, like basic training for how long and where does it take place and those, what sort of obligation there is to the recruit? Those details will follow. I just need I need your name. I need you to just email me first, and details will follow. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, now, this is uh, a military sort of uh, institution? Well, it's... it's uh... It's a fan. It's like a club. It's like it's like I I hesitate to use the word fan club because I don't think anybody is actually a fan of this program. But it, it's like a little club. We, oh, oh, you know what? I you're think you're I, taking it way too literally. Yeah, I was looking for something more like a vigilante group or something. Yeah, this is not the Guardian Angels. Oh, uh, okay. Because okay. I'm I'm into you know, but I think violence will solve the world's problems in I, the end. You know, I I do are, uh... I do too, but I'm not looking to to lead a group in in uh, in violence unless it is against. Not I don't even want to say we're going to get violent against the 9 a.m. to noon show on Monday mornings for biting our collective styly, but uh, but um, you know, we will not be violent. But thanks for calling. Okay, can you refer me to anybody that might, uh, you know, satisfy my need for vengeance? You, uh, try a hate group uh, search. Go go to Google and search hate group, okay? Okay, well, All that's right. a great suggestion. Thanks. Thanks. All right, bye. Bye. WFMU, you're on the air. I mean, you know, what's, uh, I just don't get it. Hello? I'm pathetic. WFMU, you're on the air. Wait, what is this? Well, fine. I don't need. I don't need you. WFMU, you're on the air. I don't need her at all. I mean, what? What the? Fine. Screw her. <laughs> you know what this sounds like? Actually, this sounds like one of those. Uh... If this sounds like an actual cell phone, like this guy has actually. Like, hit the, the auto dial on his phone. I, I gotta, we have to listen to this. I'm sorry. This might be immoral, but we, we are going to listen. He's listening to Ario Speedwagon. Show you, I'll show all of you. But don't let him go. Take it in, Jessica. Oh, this is fantastic. Bye. 
by the look in my eyes, baby, there was something missing. She would have known on the tone of my voice, Ashley, but you didn't listen. But you never played, said you played, it is my best. Oh, man. Oh, my tummy hurts. <laughs> oh. Oh, man, what am I going to do? I got to see my mommy. I got to talk to mommy. She'll know what to say. I got to get her back somehow. Oh, man. Ashley. I'm sorry. What am I going to do? I'm going to... Maybe I should go... What should I buy her? I'm going to buy her a house. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy her a house tonight. Oh, man. I can't afford a house. Maybe I'll get her, um, I don't know, maybe I'll get her some tea? Well, that, that'll make her, make her like me. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, no, my CD player doesn't work. Oh, my tummy's really hurting. I gotta go see my mommy. Oh, Ashley! <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> oh, man! I'll change! I'll change! I'll do anything! I'll do anything! I'll wear whatever you want me to wear! I'll do anything! Uh, oh, come on. I won't wear the flip-flops anymore. <laughs> I won't even listen to Oreo speed wagons. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Did we lose him, I guess? <laughs> All that. Well, that's the magic of of cell phones, I guess. His, it seems like his auto dial must have, you know, must have had it in his pants or something. It's happened to me before when you have your phone, you know, in your pants and, and the buttons get pressed automatically, you know, just because, you know, you're moving around. That. That is priceless, though. We are, we are going to have to send that to uh, the professor. Or something. We... WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I think what happened there is uh, your transmitter uh, is getting interference from the intercom system at the Bates Motel. Yeah. <laughs> from That's the... some wacky way up stuff. That was weird, huh? You know, I, I was going to call about behind the music, but that, that was very disturbing. Yeah. That Actually, was... I was going to say my favorite was the Carpenters, but it uh -huh. actually was the REO. It was Ario Speedwagon? The, the, the previous caller brought that to light. That reminded you of it? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling. All right. All right. Bye. That, that was truly uncomfortable. That was like listening in on, on somebody's life. I mean, was that, was, that, was that the wrong thing to do? Was that like an immoral action? Us listening in like that without... Uh, I mean, I tried to tell him. I, I said, you're on the air. I guess that makes it okay. 
But there's not much I can do about that. And I want you, Hova, to call in. You train jumper. Someone, to, someone, Chris, who is a member of Sharpling's Army, wants a war between Sharpling's, Sharpling's Army and Hova's Hoagies. I like that as a name, Hoagies. Because that's all his show is, is some crummy sub. How dare you create an army following on my, my fantastic idea. You, Hova, you call me, you chicken. WFMU, you're on the air. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello. 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 Am I on the air? Yes, you are. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, it was uh, that really weird caller. I I'm, I'm guessing that was some sort of joke. Like, I think the guy knew what he was doing. You think so? I don't... I think... It no, sounded I don't embarrassing. Any, I don't think anyone could be that weird. I, I think that was... That's no. happened to me, though, where I've actually dialed people out, and I've heard them say, Hello? Hello? All of a sudden, you know, like when I didn't make a phone call. Do you have a cell phone? Yeah, I'm, I'm on it right now. But have you ever put your cell yeah. phone in your pants and, and accidentally dialed somebody? Yes, yes, that has happened. So, uh, But, I, I, you know... I don't know. Just, that's, just going on and on to himself, uh, you know... About nothing? Like, I mean, <laughs> what sounds, was that? <laughs> well, it sounded like he broke up or something. Do, do you think anyone who's that disturbed, like, could actually, you know, be responsible for owning a cell phone? Sure. I, I think at this I think at this point, it, well, actually, it takes yeah, nothing I, I own to a own phone. a cell phone. I own yeah. a cell phone. Me, so me really too. I think, I think me owning one proves that theory. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, I, I don't know. I, I really, I think that had to be a joke. I, I, I Someone, like knew what they were doing and prank you or something. I don't I don't know about that. I, 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 I it's happened to me. That's the only thing I can say is it's happened to me. So have you joined Sharpling's army yet? No, I haven't. I'd love to. Come on. Email me. Thomas at WFMU dot org. Next time I get to a computer I will definitely do that. And say you want to enlist. And um I, I would uh actually I was wondering if I could um take a bong hit on the air. <laughs> oh, okay, why not? Let's do this. All right, let me, uh, let me do uh, this. Then. What am I, Tom Likas now? <laughs> All right, let me uh, get this. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to take a bong on the air. Okay. <laughs> what is my show? Here we go. Okay. I don't know if you can even do it. Well, that was, that was, that was beautiful. Yeah? You Thank heard the you. bubbling? I heard the bubbling. All right, that's wonderful. All right, great. Thanks for calling. All right, bye. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, uh, Tom? Yeah? Tom, hey, it's Jason. Uh, Jason? Hey, um... Oh, J oh my friend Jason. Yeah, hey, I, I was just looking at my, my cell phone... Uh huh. And and it says that that I I I called the sh the station at some point tonight. Um, um I I think you might have. Well, I mean, I did... didn't I didn't dial it though. Uh, like like when did I th I think did um. Did you have your cell phone like in your pants or something by any chance, Jason? Yeah. I I think you might have called the show without knowing. Oh jeez. Well. Well, it says I I called like a few minutes ago. Yeah, it was I guess about five minutes ago. Oh jeez. Hey, well, well, what did you hear? Nothing really. I mean, it was just you could barely hear anything. It was just like. Like staticky. Really? Uh huh. Well, that's good. Why is that? You didn't hear a anything else, did you? Like, like what? A, like a like a fight I might have had with Ashley. No, no. Okay, that's good. Now, why is it? Why is that? Well, I just. Did you guys have a fight? Yeah. Are you are, you? are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, but I said some stuff, and 
and um, I was I was kind of freaked out. So you didn't hear like any Ario speed wagon, did you? Or me like singing along with that? No, no. Or me saying that I had to see my mommy? No, why did you? Or me saying that my tummy hurt? Uh uh-uh. uh No. Or or me saying I was going to buy her a house to make her like me again? No, it was it was just like a muffled thing. It sounded like it was like in a. You, you know, your reception must not have been particularly good at that point. If it if it uh, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, good. Well. Well, good. I'm I'm just glad no one heard this. Her. I'm, yeah? I'm not on the air, am I? Yeah. Oh, jeez. I told you you were on the air. I didn't hear that. Well, I definitely said it, Jason. All right. Um, look, I better go, okay? Are you um, okay? Yeah. No. I, well, i got to buy her a house now, okay? So... <laughs> uh, hey, if you need any help, just call me back. Well, do you have like a hundred thousand dollars I could I could borrow? No, I don't. All right. Um, all right. Well, I'll see you at the softball game on Wednesday. Okay. 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 See all you right, later, bye. Jason. Bye. Okay. I guess that'll have to be our little secret. Two oh one two hundred. 9368 is the phone number. People joining the Army. The Army has just grown by five recruits in the last three minutes. Somebody emailing me saying, I shall read this right now. Hold on. They are awaiting further orders. You hear that, Hova? You hear that? I just got an email. Hova will pay. Just say the word, Tom. I want you calling, Hova. You email me, you call, buddy. Come on. You're going to bite my styly with your own little Hover's Army. Hover's, you know, Hover's Heroes, the H-Bomb Squad. Hover's Witnesses. How dare you. I challenge you. You come forward, I'll slap you. Like a, like a gentleman slaps another gentleman before a duel. I'll take off my white glove and slappeth your face. How dare you. You know the number, Hova. You dial it now. You do the right thing. You don't chicken out on me now, buddy. But that that phone call was truly embarrassing. That last uh, that last nightmare of my friend. That was actually a guy I know, Jason. And we will have to keep that as our little secret between us. But Sharpling's army, while it was meant to gather in the beginning, and meant to maybe possibly probably, most likely, yes, celebrate me. Now we have a purpose. Oh, here comes the email. Jeez, Tom, call off your goons, says Hova. I didn't mean for you to think of Hova's heroes as a rival club or anything. I was thinking we'd have different different activities from Sharpling's Army, like going to art galleries and poetry readings and stuff. How dare you? Oh, you're going to get it. There will be no Hova's Heroes. In fact, you know what? You form Hova's Heroes. And I'll form my army. You form your heroes. And then we'll meet up in a field. I will walk up to you with my troops behind me, proud. 
take off my glove, slap you in the face, and you'll fold like a cheap camera. I guarantee it. You'll fold. Oh, and I'll have my revenge. Oh, just you wait. Just you wait, my friend. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, what's up? Uh, not much. How you doing? Good. Um, I was thinking it's, like, really weird how your show is, like, a mecca for potheads. <laughs> what? Well, they all, like, keep calling up and stuff. Why, are you a pothead? No, I'm not. Oh, you don't sound like one. No. But it was, like, that guy who, like, wanted to take a bong hit on the air. That was kind of funny. <laughs> are you high right now? You can tell me. I'm not. Oh, Yo, yeah, you so are. I'm not. Listen to you. <laughs> I'm not. You're coming apart at the seams. What? You're coming apart at the seams. I'm not. You're so wasted right now. I'm not. I'm what not. is it? You drunk? No. What not. you have tonight? I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sober. A little smoky smoky? No, I promise. Huh? A little bit of the old, uh, <laughs> the old, uh, <laughs> the old, uh, the old, uh, 12, a six pack of glory there? No. Huh? No. No? No. Something a little harder? What? Anything harder, maybe? No, I'm totally no? I'm sober. I don't know. You don't sound sober. I am. I promise. What's your name? Steve. Is that a question? Are you telling me or are you asking me, I'm, Steve? I'm telling you. See, so you Steve. sound, you say, I see, I'm seeing. Would you legally be able to drive right now, Steve? Uh, yes. Yes, you would. Uh, okay, let's see what I can do. Give me something. Say something uh, fancy. Say something fast and, and crazy. Like, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? You know, that just proves to me you are an expert pot smoker. I'm speaking <laughs> to a graduate level pot smoker now. <laughs> awesome. You're awesome. See, that just, you just revealed yourself. No, awesome. Dude, that sucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sucks. Well, thank you, Steve, for calling. All right. And demonstrating to everybody the horrors of marijuana use. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> oh yeah, you sound just you sound just so against it. <laughs> what everybody should just get rid of their marijuana and give it to you? No. No, yeah. Okay, goodbye, Steve. Bye. Thanks for calling. Oh, people want to join Kathy joining Sharpling's army. Thank you. On the internet. Christopher joining. He wants, oh, he, here's what I like. Here's what I like. He wants the, a group event to be a foosball game. And then he says, we'll make Grease of Hova and his kids show. Oh, that's what I like. And he's in Toronto. And you know those, those Canadians can fight. FMU, you're on the air. Tom. Yes. <laughs> I'm an angry patron. Of what? Of my army? I'm not. I'm not angry of your army. Uh, I'm just. I'm feeling a bit neglected. I was. Um, I believe I was one of the first people to respond to your call out to the people to join this army. Yes. Uh, I was there with you over that whole Perry Farrell scandal. Yes. You know, I showed my support all night long and. Uh -huh. I still I still haven't gotten any information back from you. I, I, like I, I don't even have a certificate to prove. Like I can go and tell people, yeah, I'm in Charlton's army, but I don't have any proof, Tom. I told it's totally you it's coming. It's coming. Well, but I mean, I mean, we're I getting a web. Here's what we're doing. All right. We're working on a website, and we're working on membership cards. Those are going to be the first things. Okay. Okay. And you will get a membership card. You are in my little folder for the Army Enlistments folder. I'm sure you are. I'm even going to open it right now. What is your first name? C. C? Yes. Let's see. Chris? No. D, like A, B, C, D. Okay. What's Danger. Your... My username is Danger, my, my screen name, whatever. So if you email somebody, what does it say? I, it says danger at intact, or it'll say, oh, it, it might say Denise. Denise, let's see. Yes, and your last name starts with an S, right? That's right, Tom, just like yours. You're in the folder. Don't worry. You emailed me. Directive 1 is what you called your email. That's right. Don't worry, Denise. You will not be neglected. I'm on your list? You're on the list. You're, you will be a core member of the group. 
Oh, really? Yes. Awesome. Okay. I'm no longer angry. See? Exactly. <laughs> so don't worry, Denise. You, 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 your membership in Sharpling's Army, will, information will follow shortly. Excellent. Okay? I'll be waiting. Well, thank you, Denise. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Holy moly. The phones are going nuts. Once again, the phone number, 201-200-9368. The email address, thomas at wfmu.org. If you want to join Sharpling's Army, you know the number. Actually, not the number. The email address, thomas at wfmu.org. You just email and say, I want to enlist, and you shall be put into the ranks. Information will follow. And I'm putting out a challenge right now. You, Mr. Monday, 9 to noon. How dare you start a fan club after my club, Hova's Heroes. I want you to call me and face me on the air. None of this hiding behind the computer screen. Come on. In the meantime... Here's some music. Here's something from Bad Wizard on WFMU. <laughs>
Listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. And this is the best show on WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling here with you each and every Tuesday night from 8 until 11.
the phone number 201 9368 Open phone Tuesday. The email address, thomas at wfmu.org. You writes the email, I reads it right as soon as you sends it. I'm looking at the screen right now. Oh, what did we just hear? From the Wild Things Comp, a great collection of New Zealand garage rock from 66 to 69. We heard the challenge giving us the crunch. And the crunch is on, everybody, if you want to join Sharpling's Army, the club that we are forming. You email thomas at wfmu.org and you say, enlist me in Sharpling's Army. And the crunch is on against the rival DJs who are forming their own sad little clubs. Like Hova's Heroes. Oh, I'm going to barf. Oh, I will have payback, my friend. The thing that I'm going to tell you right now, I will take something from you that you think is yours, but shall soon be mine. <laughs> get ready. Oh, you get ready. You're going to beg forgiveness. You'll disband your little motley crew of Hova's Heroes. You can hold, first of all, you can hold your Hova's Heroes meetings in a, in a phone booth. Because that's how few people want to join Hova's Heroes. As opposed to the multitudes coming on board for Sharpling's Army. They know a good thing when they hear it. And they're coming on board. Hey, speaking of a good thing that, to hear, <laughs> a segue way. Uh, the Yardbirds checking in with Turn to Earth, Turn into Earth from the uh, the fantastic two CD set, The Yardbirds Ultimate, put out by the people at Rhino. The Redcoats before that from the album Meet the Redcoats. Finally, we heard you had no right. Nice stuff there. Recently reissued by the people at Dionysus. The Von Bondies from Detroit. Their new album, Lack of Communication on the Sympathy Label. We heard the title track. Now, ah, before that, Woody Kern. From a great comp called Hot Smoke and Sassafras, we heard a song that wasn't that good. I played the wrong track, I apologize. Biography. And that is on the Castle record label. Oh, Radio Birdman, a comp that is good, and a song that is good, Hand of Law. Radio Birdman coming at you from the Sub Pop record label. The Hand of Law will come down on all DJs that form second-rate clubs and, and little get-togethers. Aping my moves. How dare all of you. And starting us off, Bad Wizard. Something I want to send out to apparently more of my audience than I was aware of. Natural High from their album. Free and Easy. Which recently came out on the TP record label. Come on, folks. Let's get a Natural High going here. None of the old... Uh, Stuff you're using now. WFMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. I'd like to uh, talk about your, your fabulous army. Okay. Um, Tom, I sponsor a child uh, for uh, Children's International. A, a what? Uh, an organization called Children's International. They have a website at www.children.org. Uh-huh. And uh, for uh, $15 a month, you could sponsor a, a child... Uh, to help him and his family out. Uh, normally, um, kids that are in dire straits. Yes. Uh, they get uh, hospital care and they get some schooling. And I'm hoping that uh, your army uh, can pitch in and become a uh, a, a good army uh, for the for the good of, of mankind. Well, you know what? Email me the info. 
Will do. And I will look into it. Excellent. Thank okay? you, Tom. I promise I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're getting bullied into charity over the air. I've never been bullied into charity before. That was actually exciting. Like somebody, that was actually like a move out of, out of like a movie or something. Like when the cameras are on, like pinning the, the, uh, the big shot, which I am not a big shot, mind you, but pinning the person in control into uh, being forced to, to be charitable. Well, that was a first. The number, 201-200-9368. Kathy checking in, saying she wants to join Sharpling's Army. Another thing you can do is tell all the other DJs to get their own armies and just have a huge war at the station with baked potatoes. Huh, baked potatoes. Ah, uh, we, might, we might have to do something like that. Oh, Bill checking in, saying, count me in, Tom. Thank you, Bill. Fantastic. The people want to join. Tom S. at WFMU.org is, is the place to go. And the phone number, 201-200-9368. It is Open Phone Tuesday. WFMU, you are on the air. Hi. Hey. Hey, are you familiar with uh, Witchy Taito by Jim Pepper? What What is that? Oh, man. I think you'd like it. What, right what is your, it? Say, right up your alley. Say it clearer. Uh, the name of the song is Witchy Taito. It's one word, Witchy Taito. Okay. It's by uh, an artist uh, from the uh, late 60s and 70s, early 70s, mm -hmm. named Jim Pepper. All he right. A, a band called... Uh, Oh, I, I'm not sure of the name of the band. Spirit or Great Spirit. Okay. Something like that. Jim Pepper was, now, in, was, was part of the band's name. Are you high right now? No, but uh, when you were discussing those those things earlier, yeah, uh, it, it, it came to mind. I, I just figured I'd share that with the you. The notion of getting high? No, playing Witchy Taito. Oh, okay. Are you going to be uh, sparking it up tonight? No. When's the last time you smoked weed? <laughs> you can tell me. Nobody knows who you are. Just tell me honestly. Mm. About a year ago. A year ago. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. A year ago. What's the hardest drug you've ever done? Uh, the hardest drug. That was the hardest one? Yeah. The real deal. Yeah, yeah. You mean uh, the old, uh, the old uh, Charlie? Exactly. The junk. Exactly. Oh, that's right. How long ago was that? Oh, uh, I believe before you were born. Well, so you did it just once? Well, yeah. A few Smatter times. Smattering. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But no you knew problem. you knew it was a bad scene, though, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Didn't want to go there. Did you even, ever? With you, even with with you, Taito. Mm -hmm. Did you Water ever deal? Spirits. Were you ever a dealer? Water spirits? No. You were never a dealer? No. You didn't get high off your own supply. All right. Were you like a uh, low? Level, were you like a low level dealer? You can tell me that. Just no. like no, not at all. No, no, no. Okay. Just, I am. You know, just trying to figure an, out I where... Had, I had an allowance. You had an allowance. Where'd you keep your stash? Uh, cigarette pack. A cigarette pack? Yeah. Now, do you have one of those fake cigarettes that you, you do the old, uh, the weed out of? <laughs> you know the fake ones? No. No, you don't? No. All right. Oh, yeah, I know those things. They're made out of ceramic or something. Yeah, exactly, but they look ah. like a regular cigarette. No, those seem silly to me. That seems silly. All right. This is what I want to well, know. Light it? Well, uh, yeah. well, that's for when you're on the street. 
Ah, who cares? You know, who cares? Does anyone care when you're on the street? The man does. Oh, come on. The man does. The man's probably, coming down. He's coming back, you know. Some. He'll ask for He'll ask for some. That's why you want that thing. All right. Well, hey, well, you know. I know you have it. Hey. I appreciate you calling. Okay. But right. really, someday, check it out. Witchy Taito by Jim Pepper. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Ooh, boy. Witchy Taito. I will check it out, though. 201-200-9368 is the number. It is Open Phone Tuesday, which is an invitation for you to pick up your phone and be part of the action. WFMU, you're on the air. Tom. Yeah. It, it's Todd, the guy called you a chicken weeks ago. Yeah. How you doing? Good. You know, uh, the guy who called up a little while ago and said your show attracts, uh, or you, who, who, he said it, right? That well, it attracts pot smokers? Yeah, that was you. No, no, it wasn't me. Who was it? I have no idea who it was. Yeah? I, just so, wanna, I wanna comment on it. Okay, well, does it? I, huh? Are you a pot well, smoker? I, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, I think, uh, you know, beyond any, like, uh, you know, saying it tongue in cheek, I think he might have a point because. I, I was really attracted to your show, and I'm I'm always getting... In fact, I could do a pipe hit for you if you want to hear. You right now. a bong hit. I could do a pipe hit right now. Do it. All right, hold on. Here we go. Now, is this a crack pipe? No, it's pot. That's all I smoke. That's all I do is smoke pot. And, and, write, and write mean emails. What? And write critical emails to people. Come on, you know I was trying to be on your side. Ah, uh, do your stupid hit. I did it. You did it? Now, do you feel better? How do you feel right now? Well, I've been high the whole time anyway. It's not making much of a difference. Now, are you driving? Uh, no. I'm pulling over to smoke pot. So you're yes, in a... Yes, I am driving. I am driving. You're actually. in a car, though, right now. Yes, I am. Where are you exactly? Somewhere in North Jersey. I'm what? not even sure. Like on what, the turnpike or the parkway? No, no, no. Side road. What town? Um, I'm not really sure. Somewhere, uh, somewhere in the uh, 22, 206, 202 corridor. All right, we got a trace on him. Go get him. Go get him. We got him. We had him on the phone for over 30 seconds. There will be a drug bust live on the air. Hey, well, listen. Get ready. Listen. You're, you hear that? You see? Do you see any squad car coming up behind you? Uh, no. Air no you better get ready. Well, what do you think? They're they're waiting in the wings. And oh, they, uh, they're gonna pop out Th right this away. This whole drug thing is a sting with me and my me and the law enforcement officers of uh, of New Jersey. We're trying to finally get one of you, uh, you filthy druggies. We got one. Um, so get ready. Uh, actually, there is a uh, stick trooper that I see in my rear view. But well, I here he goes. After well, me. you better say good. You better uh, kiss your freedom goodbye, young man. Uh, uh, it's right. funny, you know what? The what? light actually went on, but I don't think he's after me. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> Get ready. This is it. These are your yeah. last moments of freedom, Todd. I'm going to uh, pull over a little bit because he wants to get by me, I'm sure. Oh, he's just going to cut you off, and then there's going to be another car blocking you from behind. All right, now moments. it's getting scary because he's actually pulling me over. Yes, see, here we go. All oh right. Oh, my God. There it oh goes. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm kind of nervous now. <laughs> Goodbye. Say goodbye to your freedom. <laughs> ah, you chump. You're going to be in jail forever. <clears throat> WFMU, you're on the air. Tom. Yes. I know why potheads listen to your show. Why? And first of all, I would know this for one reason alone, of course. Because you're a pothead. Whoa, you are so good. <laughs> because when your show is not a series of non sequiturs. Yeah. It's kind of like this mishmash of these random topics made relevant by, like, random people who call up. Put it this way, it's kind of like if you're taking a path home from the village at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. There's, like, four or five people in the car and someone pulls out a joint. Mm -hmm. The conversations, we're talking open phone Tuesday. Really? That's what would happen. So that's what it would be. So this show is the equivalent of... of uh... Of people of, of of people who are high just f finding their way home. That's right. This is all pothead gibberish. <laughs> That's why we tune in, man. Well, well, I'll take it however I can get it. Me too. Well, thanks a lot. No are problem. Are you high right now? Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. 
On what? <laughs> on your show, babe. Oh, thank you. And, <laughs> and marijuana. And, and... Yes. Yeah. You're high on my show and marijuana. That's right. Well, thank you. I, I mean that in so many ways. <laughs> I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, the email going crazy. Michael asking, he wants to join the Sh he wants to join Sharpling's army, but does that mean he has to quit Kenny G's Toe Jam's Warriors? He will quit. But he just wants to know if he has to. You know what? I'm not going to force anybody to quit anything that they have a previous allegiance to. If you are a member of, like, the IBJ, you can stay a member of that and join Sharpling's Army. Absolutely. There's no... There, this is not an exclusive club. But the only way to get in on the action is Thomas at WFMU.org. Say you want to enlist. So, sticking with the... Uh, the notion that my audience is, is made up of primarily of drug users and drug abusers smoking weed all night. What, how do I... T so my army is almost like an inverse army. Like, this would be like if I formed an army and my curriculum, my criteria would be for me to get guys who were like like Bill Murray in stripes like that like oh that's what we have to stock our army with Bill Murray and Harold Ramis and oh we can't have Sergeant Hulka in our army you know what I gotta take it where I can get it if you're listening and you like smoking the old uh, you know for, for lack of a uh, a better term, then welcome. Welcome. You're all welcome. Oh, well, so we're talking about behind the music. What? What is your favorite behind the music? I was trying to think of what my favorite one would be. Huh. I watched the Bare Naked Ladies behind the music last night, which is sometimes the ones that have nothing going on are the most satisfying in some way, where they where you watch them forced to create drama from like moments that weren't that dramatic where it's like and then now the Bare Naked Ladies. Their album was number one in Canada, but they could not break into the American market. As, as their album, what was their album called again? Their first album was, was uh, like, like Gordon or something like. That. It's like as their album Gordon climbed the charts in Canada, America was still wallowing in grunge music. It was 1992, America was wallowing in grunge. Like, oh well, there's the drama. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? And it's like, oh, the bare naked ladies. Then they they went on to record a, a song and they did it naked. <laughs> or or there was also another controversy where it was like, and the bare naked ladies were uh, supposed to play a New Year's Eve show in Toronto and or or I forget where it was in Ottawa. And someone from the mayor's office saw their name, and had them pulled from the bill. And then, then, and then they talk to one of the bare naked ladies, and it's like, and I woke up the next morning, and we were front page news that we were taken off this bill. And then the bare naked ladies, the next, uh, they're with their name in the headlines. Everyone wanted to know what their music was about, and their cassette, their cassette went gold in Canada, which is just. That says, that says more about the, the Canadian music industry that 
their cassette went gold because everyone bought their cassette. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Tom? All right, how are you? Good. Uh, just calling up to get back to D. Snyder. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that I've met, uh, had the pleasure of meeting D. Snyder three times in three different decades. Now, are you a Twisted Sister fan? Never. How, what were the circumstances of the first meeting? At the first meeting, I uh, I worked in a clothing store on 59th Street, and uh, he and his bandmates came in to buy, you know, flashy English-looking, you know, stage clothes. Oh. And uh, I guess they were just like a local area band. Mm -hmm. They were like a Long Island rock. Yeah, band. but they they I think they played all over, you know, Long Island, New Jersey, that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. They would play like uh, like the Good Rats would also play those same clubs. Yeah. And like, uh, what were some of the groups from that era? Also, I'm trying to think. Did the Good Rats? Well, I wasn't really into the local okay. bands at the time. I uh -huh. was more into like, you know, English rock. Uh huh. So, so when they came in and bought that clothes, so how how did that go? How how did you? How what did you think of D. Snyder, based on that exchange? <laughs> I don't know if I could say it on here. <laughs> well, try to keep it clean. Um, I don't know. I, they were just a bunch of kids. Uh -huh. Now, what was the second meeting like? <laughs> the second meeting was uh, making a uh, Twisted Sister music video in the 80s, in the, I guess about 87. Uh -huh. and, uh, what and was the video? Be Cruel to Your School? No, it was some, leader leader of the pack. No, it was some silly um, video having to do with him driving around in a car chasing some girl in a uh, was Corvette. He, was, he was driving a Corvette. No, no, the girl was driving a Corvette. He was driving, he a, was driving a GTO, which was pretty cool. Uh huh. And which, how was, did you have to listen to the song all day? All day and all night. And and how did, how was D. Snyder then? Was the was the group on the way down at that point? He was the group. Okay. He wouldn't have anyone else in the band, in the video. Uh-huh. So was he kind of an egomaniac at that point? Yes, somewhat. And, wh and what were you doing on that video? What was your job? It, well, that would just give away who I am. Okay, well, you won't do that. But I, I, I was in the art department, let's say that one. Okay. Now, what was the third and final, hopefully not final meeting, though, uh -huh. okay. with D. Snyder? Hopefully on the year 2010... You can meet up with him again and keep your four meetings in four decade streak going. That would be interesting. So, what was the third? What was the third meeting? The third meeting was <clears throat> uh, I worked on a television series, and uh, he was a guest star on that show, and uh, he uh, his his ego. Let's say that his ego had grown exponentially with each decade really and, so yeah at this point what, what was he how long ago was this uh, this was uh this was oh, actually no that would be 2000 and yeah it was uh it was two years ago so it was uh, 1999 so was he promoting his movie at that point it was he was uh i guess he was uh this was before the movie was made or as the movie was being made, he was he thought of himself as a film star. Like the he thought of himself as like a pioneer in the genre of horror movies. He was the new Wes Craven, right? Or the new. He, he, <laughs> I was I was actually surprised to the building that we worked out of in the uh, in the West Village um, it was also uh, it housed the company that uh, that made his film or. Or, uh, uh huh. I know the company. And, I've been yeah. in business with that company before. <laughs> right. So that was. Let me just tell you. That was the company that uh, that had four employees, and then one day there were three hundred people working there. Yeah. Right. Yes. And they thought they were. All of a sudden, they thought they were something that they weren't. And, and surprisingly enough, they just went down the tubes. Finally, I'm amazed <laughs> they lasted that long. Well, somebody had to find out. Yes. So, uh, so did you work for that company? No, I did not. 
But you were in the same building as that company. Yes. Were you in the same building as that company when they were the big company? Yes. Ah, which is down uh, <laughs> where where uh, where where a lot of cows are killed. Yes. Well, they're usually killed before they get there, but a lot of cows are, are mutilated and. <laughs> That's true. So, so what do you do now? You are are you still in an art department somewhere? Yes. Still in an art department. Still a, an art slave. And who is the most exciting person you've ever met through all your experiences? Actually, I have to say I've met lots and lots of people, but the most the person I was most impressed with, and in all the years, has been uh, me. David Bowie. I thought you were going to say me. Well, you know, you have oh, the I'm best show on, on uh, FMU. Yeah, but we've never met, so you'll change that when you meet David. When you meet me. Yes. David Bowie will go to second. Yeah. Well, so when, honestly, just kidding, when did you meet David Bowie? Uh, a few times, actually, but um, one time I worked on a uh, on a film that he was in, and I thought that he was the most professional and uh, and the most uh, courteous of, uh, of all the different personalities that I've worked with over the years. Now, was that movie an ensemble film? Ah. Uh, not really. It was a film starring Roseanne Arquette. Was it called Delicatessen? <laughs> no, it was called The Spaghetti Incident. Was that what it was called? Yes. Right? See, yes. I was close. I I, was... No, no, I'm sorry. The Linguini Incident. Linguini Incident. That's yeah. what I was thinking of food. I knew it had... Yeah. I've seen that video box. Yeah. How's the movie? Is it a great movie? Um, I, I, I've never rented it. Did you ever see the finished product? No, I don't really like to necessarily see the things that I work on. So you're like Linda Ronstadt. You cannot go back and listen. Oh, no, I go back and listen all the time. It's just that there aren't a lot of... There was no point to see that movie. Is what yeah, it wasn't a very good experience. What is the working with David Bowie. What is your proudest accomplishment in terms of... What project did you work on that you are the most proud of? Um... There's a couple, I think, I guess. But well, what's one of them? What's um, Upright Citizens Brigade. What did you do on that? <laughs> An art department. You were in the art department? Yeah. What I ran the, the art department. What seasons did you work on that? Uh, all three seasons. Really? I think I might know you. We met once. We did? Yeah. See? So now you can move David Bowie to second. <laughs> Do it right now. Move him to second on the list, since we have uh, officially met. Uh, 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 on one condition. What's that? <laughs> that? That you don't turn any more people into the cops. <laughs> that will be the, he will be the sacrificial lamb for the whole show. Okay. What is your first name? Uh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Norville. Norville. That's yeah. not your first. I've never met anyone named Norville. Yeah, you did. I did. Yeah. Well, I guess I did. In the inner sanctum. So we met in the inner sanctum. Correct. We met. The, I went only there one time. You got it. First season while I was there. That's right. So we met then. Absolutely. In Brooklyn. Sunset Park. Sunset Park. That was exciting. I was, you know, I can't believe you remember me. Oh, I couldn't forget you. Oh, that's so nice. I think. <laughs> well, thank you, Norval. Okay. And email me. Let's let's uh. Let's we'll get you in Sharpling's army, first of all. We'll talk. And then we'll move you up in the ranks. I'm going to leapfrog you over a few people. Oh. Possibly. I'm saying that just to excite other people. Okay. All right. Thanks, Noel. Bye. Bye. WFMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. Hey. Um, as far as smoking pot, Yeah. I used to be a, a big pothead. Yeah. And um, actually, I think your show cured me of it because... Uh, what would happen? I'd get like too mellow and fall asleep. But I like your show, and like I try to concentrate and, and listen to everything, and not you know, not just space out. So your show's like a panacea. Really? Huh? It really is. I think so. I mean, like. So I forced you to pay attention, and you had to put down the uh, the old uh, the wacky tobacco. Yeah. Uh, do you smoke pot? Uh, actually, no, I'm not a user. 
Did you ever, like in high school or anything? I was pretty clean. I'm a pretty clean uh, living guy. a straight guy. shooter? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. But, uh, no, nah, man. I don't like, condemn a... it, though. What's that? I don't condemn you and your pothead brethren. Yeah. And I'm glad I could somehow end up being the the radio show that potheads have been, are choosing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think whether you're smoking or not, you can enjoy your show anyway on different levels. You think so? Yeah, and, it, you know, like I said, it cured me pretty much. Well, at least, put it this way, at least I don't smoke during your show. Okay. Because I want to soak in the whole aura of your show, which is a very good show. Oh, thank you. Will you, will you smoke after the show? Yeah, there's a good chance I'm probably going to light up and smoke the smoke. Nice. And, oh, uh, for you. You know, get some, uh, yeah, right after your show. Okay. Well. I, I did smoke, like, a couple hours before, but I mellowed out by the time. I was okay, but I'm straight by the time I get to your show. Uh-huh. Well, but, that, uh, yeah, I you... like the show. Oh, thank you. All right, man. Thank you for calling. Take it easy. All right, you Bye. too. Bye. 201-200-9368, the phone number. Thomas at WFMU.org, the email address. Just so you know. I received a phone call from WFMU's own Hova during that last uh, music break. And he begged me to back off. So, members of my army, we will move when I give the signal, not a moment earlier. When I give the high sign, and maybe I never will give the high sign, but that's when we make our move. But let's show class until then, everyone. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, it's Mike Healy. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, hey, I wanted to make a request, if possible. Sure. What do you want to hear? Well, I've had such a great day today that I want to hear uh, Feeling Groovy by Simon and Garfunkel. Okay. The, uh, that's 59th Street song? I, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been in such a great mood. I got a massive raise today. I saw an old friend that I haven't seen in years. Uh huh. Oh, that's and, nice. And I found a first pressing of the killer inside me. Oh, well, what is the killer inside me? Uh, Jim Thompson. A, oh, a book. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a first. A first what? A printing. First pressing of of that book. A first printing of the book. A, a book would be a first printing. An album would be a first pressing. Because I guess because books are printed. And albums are pressed. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't realize I was talking to Alfred Knopf. Well, no, no, no. I mean, it's... Oh, hey, hey, you know, maybe you could help me. My uncle just wrote a book on fire engines. Maybe you could take a look at it for him. Maybe you want to publish it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, uh, I'm not a publisher. Oh, hey, you know, one thing I've always wondered... What's that? How many copies do you have to sell of a hardback before it goes into... Uh, into paperback production. How many <laughs> copies do you have to uh, print up? I, I'm sorry, I mean press up. Uh huh. Well, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a book publisher. Well, you're a publisher, though, right? No, no, I'm not a. Publisher. Oh, you're not. Oh, geez, I, I just I just thought with the uh, the authority that you were throwing around, I, I just assumed that you're one of the major publishers. Oh, and didn't I see you maybe? Uh, a, a month ago in a hot air balloon on TV uh, with a couple of the other major publishers of the book world taking a, an around-the-world trip? No, that was not me. Oh, that, oh, was that wasn't me. you? No. Okay. That was definitely not me. Oh, okay. Oh, another question here. Um, uh-huh. What kind of advice would you give to, to a young writer that's just starting out, like about getting published? What would, what would you recommend? Well, I'm... I'm not a publisher, so I uh, I really don't know what <laughs> what to to tell somebody. I guess I, they, I mean what I hear a lot is that people who want to write well should read a lot. Oh, oh, this is priceless uh, priceless information. I'm 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 loving these tips you're giving. Well, no, that's not that's not like a tip from. Oh, 
hang on, let me write this down so I can tell my uncle about it. Well, see, I think you're really oh, reading into this too Oh, you guys are publishing much. the Clinton book, aren't you? Who? Your company. What's your company called? <laughs> I, I, I'm not a publisher. Oh, oh, I thought I saw you on uh, on CNN last week talking about that. I am not in the publishing world at all. Really? I, I don't know where. That's, it... that's so shocking because I really thought that I, I was talking to one of the heavyweights. I, I have nothing to do with publishing. All I was doing was just trying to clarify the fact that you said a first pressing of of a book, which would be actually a first printing, though. Oh, so it is printing. I'm so. Gosh, well, I have one question for you. What's also, that? Also, um, can you forgive me? For what? For making that mistake. <laughs> it's not. Look, I, I'm hey, not. Hey, while I got your ear, I I could really use some more of that uh, that priceless uh, information you've got. Um, hey, out of all the uh, authors you've ever published, who has been the most difficult? I've never published a, a single thing. I'm really, not, I'm not in the book publishing uh, business. Well, you well you could have fooled me, huh? Just that authority that that you were just bellowing. I I just. Uh, there was no, there's no mistake in my mind that I was talking to one of the greats of the publishing world. You, you're completely mistaken. All, look, all I was doing was just trying to tell you that a, you said you got a first pressing of of a book. Yeah, and then you, I, uh, you corrected me, which I'm so thankful for. I mean, the way you did it was really kind, really nice. Uh, I think you're the one overreacting here. I'll, I'm overreacting. I think so. Huh. Wow. Huh. Hey, you know what I've also wanted to know? What's that? Um, what has been your company's biggest payday in terms of uh, of a book that you guys put out that was maybe optioned and turned in, into a movie? Like, what's your biggest payday for that sort of thing? Well, see, I've never worked as a... Uh... Oh, you've never worked as a publisher? No, I haven't. Really? Huh. No. I mean, I know that when things are optioned a lot of times for movies, uh -huh. they're optioned like from the author, not from the. Wait, uh... wait I'm writing this down. Okay, they're, no, 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 no. This, is just, from, no. this is just common author. Okay. This is just common knowledge. This is not meant to be. What? Well, well, this is not told from a, a publisher. Oh, but it sounds so authoritative. Geez. Well, it's it's not meant to be. I'm wow. Just, okay. I mean, I just know something that it doesn't. Oh, mean... you know a lot. Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't. Hang on, slow it... down. Slow down. It doesn't mean that it's true. I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm saying it from some 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 position of authority, like I'm trying to come from from on high with this. Oh, oh, but it sounds like that, and 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 that's great because it's yeah. That okay, published by. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, wait, owned by the author? Is that what you said? Usually, the author would con would would have a say in optioning. Okay. Wow, okay, wow, that's, that's great, okay. Um, so where do you think you're going to go from here in terms of you've actually conquered the publishing world? Where do you think you'll take it next? Uh-huh, I, I don't have any plan to do like anything. Like mo movies, maybe? Oh, and you're also talking about record albums and, uh, and that sort of thing. Do you think you'll ever be like, uh, I don't know, up there with Puff Daddy or, or, or Herb Alpert? In terms of what, running a label? Yeah, because my cousin, he, he's got a band. Uh, they're called the Knaves. And he's, he's uh, just finishing up a, um, a demo tape. And he really wants to shop that around the labels. And I, and I have no idea what to do or where to guide it. But it sounds like you really know what you're talking about, not only in the publishing world, but also in the record business. So uh, well, look, what, do you think, what do you think he should do? What, in terms of trying to get a record deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, would you sign him? I'm not in the position to sign. Well, when do you think your label a, will be set up? I don't run a label, and I don't, I'm not going to run a label. Oh, and you I, don't? And I don't run a publishing company. Huh. Really? Well, yeah, really. I, you, you have completely blown this thing out of proportion. Oh, I have? Yes, you have. Really? Yes. you got a lot of nerve, mister. That's all i got to say. Well, you know, I think you... Why is somebody so angry like you? I'm not angry at all. I called up to just make a request. You told me you had such a great day, and yeah, up until now. And then now, look at you. You're you. You said look you at got, me. You said you got a huge raise. Yes. 
You said you met an old friend. Yep. And you got a first pre printing of... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I said pressing, didn't I? Yes. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's I gotta, okay. I got to apologize again for that. I really hope you can forgive me. It's okay. Oh. Oh, I have a knot in my stomach now. I mean, am I wrong on that? Holy moly. Hey, why don't we get back to the music? Here's something from Glass Candy and the Shattered Theater. We are going to hear what is known in the radio business as a twofer, because today is Tuesday, and this is Two for Tuesday. Thank you. She's a tongue twisting storm. She'll come to the show tonight and pray to the light machine. Charge behind and I'm a mama. She's a fucking back of legend. Hanging on a ledge of dreams. Come on. Come on. We really got a good thing going. Come on. Come on. If we're gonna make it, you better hang on and stay. Oh, we can't dance with a talk much. We just wanna play. We really like tigers on Vaseline. from Mars.
said we retired it, but it's back. Love who is very keen to 
All right. Hey, this is the best show in WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling. You're listening to WFMU East Orange, WFMU. I said it's WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. We just heard from The Clean from their hot new album, Get Away. The song Stars, that's on the Merge record label. Before that, from a comp called The Psychedelic States of Florida, Volume 3, on the Gear Fab label, we heard The Powers of Purple by Miss Dove. And before that, back on the program after being retired, The King Brothers, the album on In the Red. Dead Soul, that's how good that record is. It comes out of retirement. And the Two for Tuesday from Glass Candy and the Shattered Theater before that. From their demos CD, we heard Be a Dolly. And from a 7-inch called, the title of the 7-inch is Brittle Woman, but we heard their David Bowie cover, Hang On to Yourself. And everybody, the email address, thomas at wfmu.org, to enlist in... Sharpling's army, which grows with each passing week. I'm a member. Yes, small change is a member. That is true. Hey, I want to thank my call screener, Dave, for helping out tonight. Thank you so much, sir. We're moving the program into a new era. I tip my hat to you. And stay tuned for small change. Nickel and Dime Radio coming up on your radio right now what is love 